all over the North American continent are found to be an assortment of features that are difficult, if not impossible, to explain by reference to modern, currently observable processes. And when taken as a whole, implicate the action of events so extraordinary that they almost defy comprehension. It is our judgment that the full mind-bending story of these events has yet to be told, and that when told, it will alter forever our understanding of both the history of the world and of humankind. Here, like, here's the lobe. Yeah. Here's, here's, here's one lobe. Dump it off the, the top. Other lobe, pouring down this way. Over here, it's coming under the lobe. It's filling out this way. And over here, at Alta Cooley, which is here, it's following in the marginal. That's coming down into the Columbia. This is coming down. They're meeting here. Water's coming down this way, spreading out, filling Quincy Basin. Coming down this way, also contributing to the filling of Quincy Basin. Water rises, spills over here, here, and here, and it begins to drain out this way. Some water runs like this, pours through Sentinel Gap. This water comes down, this comes down. All of this is coming down to right here, Wallula Gap. All of it, right there. So this is the gathering of the waters. This is the parking of the waters. And there may be giant floods coming up the snake out of southern Idaho and Utah that are meeting. Right in this area north of here in 1973, Victor Baker, ba Victor Baker wrote a paper that ramped up the whole scale of the Missoula flood because he was able to find high water marks on the mountainsides and was then able to calculate based upon the, the gradient and there's a very slight shallow uh, gradient to the south here right so he was able to determine from the high water marks how much water flowed through this valley and he came up with about 800 million cubic feet per second which is about roughly 20 times the flow of every single river on earth flowing at once okay so you got to figure that about 400 feet of water filling this entire valley here, flowing south. And as we go, um, as the day goes on and we, we're, we're back in the Cheney Palouse, it was this water that produced the Cheney Palouse scab land, okay? And right over there towards uh, Cooley City uh, is where the flow intersected the Cooley monocline. And because of the weakened rock, on the flank of the monocline, it began to do this that we see right ahead of us here. And we see the new alcove, dry falls alcove in front of us here. The one right on the other side is called Monument, Monument Alcove. And then we've got the rock blade right here, uh, Umatilla Rock, which had the flood consist continued for any number of days or weeks beyond what it did, Umatilla Rock would be no more. But if we look up on the horizon, we can see just uh, right on the horizon, there's some erosion up there, almost at the same level that we're at now. So you can imagine this whole view from here to the horizon was just a mass of rushing water down to the south. And this water would have been choked with thousands of icebergs. So you can't just picture water. You gotta almost picture this as being almost like thin concrete. It's gonna be so loaded with sediment there's probably going to be trees in it. There's going to be megafauna remains being swept along in it. It's going to be loaded with all kinds and sizes of sediment from granular up to big boulders. And uh, all of this is headed down towards Soap Lake. And 
Just beyond Soap Lake, we saw a few glimpses yesterday of the Ephrata fan where it's spread out. And there's billions of boulders, some, many of them which are bigger than the, uh, than our vans that we're driving in. Many of them that are two and three times the size of our vans that are part of that uh, the, the Ephrata fan. And that's all the material that was ripped out in the creation of the coolie. Thank you. 